It's LSU Odyssey Oddcast, Volume 10. Out in the backyard uh, on a summer night. Talking LSU's wild recruiting weekend, number two. And, um, you know, we had another pair of five stars on campus. Omari Abor out of Duncanville, defensive end. And he, he looked like he had a really good time with his family. And the other five star. Cornerback Denver Harris out of North Shore. <clears throat> now, Denver, he was hosted by Eli Ricks. Amari Abor was hosted by Jaqueline Roy. And both came onto campus. Denver Harris showed up at midnight on Thursday. They were both there from Friday on through the weekend. And both had their families in tow. Also, so did four-star Georgia commit running back linebacker uh, C.J. Washington. He had his family there as well. Uh, All three, you know, they put on the purple and gold jerseys. Denver Harris wearing number one. Uh, C.J. Robinson wearing my number 27, and Amari Abor in 23. And they all look really good in those uniforms, all look really sharp. Um, you know, they Amari Abor has a good relationship with Andre Carter. Uh, and, you know, it seems like Oklahoma, Ohio State, um, are really, even Alabama, are really in that... Uh, mix for Omari Abor. You know, he's a five-star, just like Shamar Stewart. He's going to get that big-time attention. Will LSU get one of these guys, at least? You know, is it going to be Abor? Will it be Stewart? That's an interesting question. Will LSU miss on both of these five-star defensive ends? That's another interesting thing to to ask. Uh, Is that possible? Can LSU miss out on both Stewart and Abor. Um, I think that would be hard to do, considering Andre Carter and his strong relationship with these defensive linemen already. He's been a great recruiter. Um, he just has the pedigree. 25 combined years of experience, um, you know, coaching and playing in the NFL. You know, 12 as a player, 13 as a coach. I think maybe you swap those. Um, but still 25 combined years, Pro Bowls, you know, he, he, Bill Belichick had to have him come back to the team twice. He needed him to show people like Kyle Van Noy and <laughs> some others how to, how to do it. And uh, he came back and he schooled those guys, uh, Dante Hightower, people like that. And sadly, after Carter left, uh, they won some Super Bowls just right after he left. And so he played for the Patriots during that uh, during that um, that transition period for their defense before they won some more Super Bowls with Brady. And so Carter, he he knows what that takes, you know, the grind. And so he's perfect for recruiting. Um, could he miss on both of these guys? I just don't think so. I think he has to get at least. Shamar Stewart or or Amari, one of them at least, um, just because of the odds. The statistical odds are in his favor. He's such, you know, his pedigree and the way that he would be able to teach them. Um, I actually would not be shocked if he got both. I know people would be like, whoa, well, that's a crazy thing. Of course, you're going to say that because you're for LSU. No, I think it's just, it's straight up just these kids want to go to the NFL And they want to be taught by someone who's already been there, already been coaching. Andre Carter's straight out of the NFL. He's only been back in the college game for a few months. You know, like, it's still fresh in his mind. And so to be able to absorb that kind of knowledge from a guy like that who's been there and done that, that has to be attractive to these recruits. I cannot see them going, you know, elsewhere if they really are, you know, eye on the prizes for the NFL. Um, I get LSU as a deep defensive line, but then again, guys like B.J. Ojolari, Ali Gay, they might only have one more season before they're gone to the NFL. 
you know, Savion Jones is there, Landon Jackson, but there's still those spots. Um, there's still playing time to be had for these defensive ends. So while it does look like a stacked defensive line, and it is, we will be losing in one or two guys coming up in the next NFL draft. And so LSU needs to load up. And so look for, you know, one of those two guys to commit to LSU. C.J. Washington is very interesting because Blake Baker has made it clear he wants him to be a linebacker. You know, C.J., I think he had 15 touchdowns as a running back this year. Or, sorry, last year. But, um, you know, he sees him as a good side-to-side speed linebacker. Uh, with great tackling ability, C.J. Washington. Great finishing ability. He's really, he's, he's tight in coverage as well. He's not as good as Sean Murphy in coverage, but he's still, he's still adept. But it's more about the speed and the, and the capability and the potential that uh, Blake Baker sees in him and what he could, you know, his vision for his development. He, he's a, still a Georgia commit. He's been a Georgia commit for, since 2020. I don't see CJ flipping to LSU even though it's it's admirable that Blake Baker's making that push. I just, I, I see him taking his time here, and maybe he doesn't stay with Georgia, but I don't know if I really see him at LSU. Um, I could be wrong on this, but I'm just not getting the vibe of him coming to LSU, but that's just that's just my, my two cents. But... You know, his family did enjoy their time and, and did like Blake Baker and everything. Uh, Jake Olson, the linebacker analyst, also had to say. And Alec Osborne was also there as well, and they, they listened to all of them. As far as who else was on campus in this crazy recruiting weekend, number two, you know, it, <laughs> he keeps coming back. He just wants more. And you know what? That's fine. We we want more of him, and it's quite a it's quite a brilliant thing for LSU fans because Quincy Wiggins is going to be a five star. He should already be a five star. LSU Odyssey just gave him his fifth star. We're going to beat him all to it. Um, we we just gave him his fifth star. Yeah. Hopefully, the rest of the recruiting world will follow us. But we've already talked to Quincy Wiggins. We've already done our exclusive interview. Um, certain things we we couldn't post. Certain things that he didn't answer or his answers weren't publishable. But we're gonna try and talk with him again because he was a great interview. And you know he keeps coming back to campus and he really likes it around there. He's comfortable with the staff. He's got a lot of friends on the team. You know Mason Smith, Damone Clark, Jaqueline Roy. You know, even Major Burns, he remembers and, and knows that for, as a teammate and a good friend from, you know, their Madison prep days together. You know, Quincy, he, he knows some guys from basketball more than just football, you know. Guys like Jack Besh, who also played basketball, you know, they'll know him. You know, it's, it's interesting because Quincy Wagons, he's only been playing football for a single season. He played Pee Wee and all that, but he stopped to kind of play basketball. And then Jeff Jones, his basketball coach, said, you know, there's no offers for you for basketball. We need to get you in some pads, man. And the football team was overjoyed to have him. Have him and their defense was incredible this year with him. I, I crunched the numbers, and I believe they, they only allowed two teams to score more than 20 points on them. And it was 20 and 22 they had three shutouts, including in, in the title game and their first two games. They held most of their teams to under 10 points. Um, they were a smothering defense, and I've tried to find Quincy Wiggins' stats like crazy. I've tried, I've tried, I've tried. I cannot find his stats anywhere. But I know he was a huge part of that defense from the film. You can see all of what he's doing. He's wreaking so much havoc, whether he gets the stat or not. 
Um, he requires so much attention. You could see double, even triple teams with the you know running back coming in to help, and that would free up so much uh, space for the other guys to attack that quarterback. And uh, you know, there's so many ways that he can help a team. He can be kicked inside as well. The, the the sky is the limit for Quincy Wiggins, and he cannot have enough of LSU. He keeps coming back for these unofficial visits, and I really I smell blood in the water. I think Quincy Wiggins is coming to LSU. I don't think he'll commit straight away, but I mean it's looking likely. It's looking like you know, like he's gonna. You know, he would be a great asset to have. Unbelievable player. He's got, you know, this kid, he's really quiet, really humble. But he's got high character to him. He's, he's, he just seems like a very interesting kid. You know, but he wasn't the only, you know, local who tore it up lately at these camps. Emery Jones on the offensive line. I think he's been forgotten. I think some have been talking about Will Campbell, Bo Bordelon, Malik Agbo, Kelvin Banks Jr., Cam Dewberry, all these other guys, and quite rightfully so. All these guys are extremely talented. And they you know, they were on campus and they were showing what they could do and of course, yeah, give them their time, give them their yeah. But when Emory Jones came on camp this Saturday and he had those reps against Ty G. Hill, a really good defensive tackle that LSU has uh, locked up with the commitment from the 2022 class, you saw what he can do. You saw his multifaceted abilities. Emory Jones is an absolute beast out there, an absolute phenomenon. Um... He still has some things he can improve on. He still has some has some ways to go in his game, but he looks like a really stout, really impressive offensive tackle out there. And I've heard he can also play guard. Um, I believe he's got the size for that. He's got the great feet. He's got the impressively aggressive hands. He's he's got it all, and he was able to receive him one-on-one coaching from Bat Brad Davis. It was fantastic. Emory Jones, he 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 loved that. You know, Denver Harris, five-star, five-star corner on North Shore. He was shown around by Eli Ricks, and I'm told you know this is going to be a little tough. This is going to be tough, even though he loves the DBU brand. He loves what Corey Raymond's preaching about his, you know, his, his vision for, for Denver's future. And his family had a good time with the dinner and everything. You know, Denver has been entertained and recruited by Alabama for some time. And I've been told by multiple, you know, big insiders that Alabama is the one to beat here. That Alabama will still have the lead. But this will definitely give Denver something to think about. LSU have done something with five stars when they come into this um, into this team. Christian Fulton was a draft pick. Then you got Patrick Peterson, of course, Derek Stingley Jr., Eli Ricks. They become All Americans, and you know Jacoby Stevens, even five star safety, what he did. You know, what we do with five-star DBs at LSU is we they fulfill their promise every time. And they go to the NFL, and they, they kick ass and take names. And most of them win a championship as well. Uh, some have won a Thorpe Award. You know, we've turned a lot of guys from three or four stars into NFL powerhouses, but we've also taken the five stars that are sometimes busts, and we've turned them into locks. And that's because of Corey Raymond and his coaching. And I think Denver Harris, if he comes to LSU, it's because of Corey Raymond's absolute genius on the recruiting trail. 
and it's because Corey Raymond is the ultimate teacher of defensive back craft. <laughs> and it will be because Denver Harris would you know, want to play alongside guys like Eli Ricks next year. And Dwight McLaughlin and Jay Ward, if, if Jay Ward stays. Potentially even Derek Stingley if he stays, which probably not, but say, say if he does. So, you know, you got some interesting dynamics there. It's definitely going to be LSU versus Alabama all the way. And I don't expect a commitment, you know, soon, imminently from Harris. I expect a commitment probably around signing day. And it, it, it'll it be a tough, tough race. And LSU, are, you know, we better be going after a, a cluster of cornerbacks here. We better be offering Jordan Allen. Um... And another piece of news with cornerbacks. If you read LSU Odyssey's recruiting uh, 2022 class predictions 2.0 piece from five days ago, you would have you would have noted something interesting. You know, we list our current class, and in the current class was Marcus Scott at cornerback. And then if you scroll past the predictions and you go all the way down to the final 25 list, Marcus Scott is not on that list. Marcus Scott is gone from that list. It's because we believed he was not going to make the final 25. We thought that he might be processed at some point. And... Frankly, we thought it might be after this camp performance that LSU were going to offer and see how he did at the camp and then potentially pull that offer if the performance wasn't up to snuff because of how many you know, great corners there are in this class. Marcus Scott did not perform well. He got burnt a few times by DeColdis Crawford. And um, they pulled the offer, and Marcus Scott... As many of you now know, suddenly is gone and committed to Missouri. So that's another reason why you need to subscribe to LSUodyssey.com because we are we're seeing the landscape here clear clearly for what it is in the 2022 class. We've been on it, and what I think LSU are going to do with the corners now is move into territory where they're going local. I think they're going to offer Jordan Allen to take up that corner spot. I think they want to get him on for another visit like they had him a few weeks ago. But moving on, um, moving on from that, you know, LSU continued their wild recruiting weekend. You know, they had, you know, Garrett Nussmeyer even showed up. Uh, Max Johnson was, was hanging out with people like Baby Gronk. Baby Gronk was there working out with the youngsters, and then Baby Gronk was doing uh, arm wrestles with Cardell Thomas and hanging out with Butte and Max Johnson and Kojo. It was, it was hilarious seeing those photos and seeing that video. It, it's a good time. Um, definitely follow Madden Sam Miguel on Instagram to, to check all that out and LSUodyssey.com definitely has all of that content as part of our recruiting weekend number two uh, article just right there on the home page. Um, there is some quarterbacks from the 2023 class that were offered. Everyone expected Ricky Collins to get that LSU offer. He's a, he's a local out of Woodlawn, a four-star quarterback, kind of kind of lanky, kind of tall. And uh, Ricky Collins got his offer, and uh, I, I really, he's he's an interesting quarterback. He's an interesting guy. I, I think he still is very raw in his abilities. I think he needs to to bulk up a bit more to be able to absorb those hits. But I love what I see from Ricky Collins in the film. He he's definitely a gamer. I love what he does in the passing game. I love the way he can manipulate the, 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 the pocket. I love the way that uh, he can roll left, throw against the grain. doesn't really seem to phase him. 
He's got really good uh, off-platform throws as well, which is something that this other quarterback, 2023 quarterback Dante Moore, out of Detroit, Michigan's Martin Luther King High, who we offered as well, um, he showed out in the SoCal Elite 11 Regional just barely with these off-platform throws, doing these brilliant uh, rolling to his left and making these throws across the body. You know, just showing a bevy of different things with the legs and the arm, incomplete synchronicity. And Dante Moore and Ricky Collins, both 2023 quarterbacks, picking up offers from LSU. It'll definitely be a crowded quarterback room. 2023, Eli Holstein, Dante Moore, and Ricky Collins all holding offers. Then you got 2022 with Walker Howard, 2021 with Garrett Nussmeyer, 2020 with Max Johnson, who has four years left of eligibility. You could even have Miles Brennan return for another season next year. Um, unlikely, but possible. And then you even got 2024 with Mabry Metauer, who we just published an exclusive interview with and profile. Uh, really, really great insight into this quarterback who is wise and mature beyond his years. Uh, really, 6'5", 215. He's only 15 years old. This kid is something special. Um, he, he, we, we, we did a great interview with him. And then there's even 2024 Arch Manning. So there is just an outrageous army of quarterbacks for LSU and Jake Peets he's going after a lot of different guys and iron's going to sharpen iron and we're going to see who's going to be the guys at LSU and there's a lot of championships just right out in the ether a lot of Heisman trophies a lot of great seasons for some of these guys in their futures if, if, if everything goes right for them and Everybody pushes the right buttons as people stay healthy, and LSU pick the right guys, offer the right guys, and sign the right guys. And um, right now, Jake Peets is offering people left and right who he feels fit the mold for that prototypical LSU quarterback. You know, in you know, painted in the form of Joe Burrow, of course. You know, and. Um, yeah, LSU had a great recruiting weekend, number two. Um, we, we go in-depth even more on the site with some exclusive interviews, some articles, a bunch of stuff where we're really, really uh, being the pavement here, talking to a lot of different people around the country, especially in and around Louisiana. And, and figuring out what's going on down there and figuring out what, who LSU are really targeting. And I feel like if, if you're going to see two commitments coming imminently for LSU, the first is Emory Jones. Expect an Emory Jones commitment to LSU sooner rather than later. I think this guy has got a great feeling about, about the Tigers. And number two, Quincy Wiggins. I feel like he's going to commit to LSU. Um, I hope it would be sooner rather than later. I can't be con- I can't be too sure on that. But I but I have a strong feeling he's going to do that. Also, one thing to note: a safety that LSUodyssey.com has been following from the very from the very beginning. We got some intel at Durante Jones and Corey Raymond. We're going hard after IMG's Kamari Wilson, four-star safety at an IMG. And this guy is an absolute freak. He's, he's, a, he's a young Ed Reed type. He, he's a very cerebral player on the field. His pre-snap diagnosis reminds me of Sage Ryan's um, from, from, a, from a year ago. Just really smart player. Very creative in the way he, he does his coverages. Very deceptive. It, he gets a lot of interceptions. He, he's very good, not just in you know being a safety, but he can also play corner as well. 
very versatile. Uh, Kamari Wilson had some very positive things to say to Steve Wiltfong about LSU, saying that LSU is the place that could develop him the most and get him to NFL the most, and he likes what Durante Jones is building there. Mentioning, you know, Durante Jones is from the Minnesota Vikings, so he understands the NFLSU pedigree at LSU, and I really hope we, we get Kamari Wilson, and I believe we're going to. Um, there's not a lot of people who are going to tell you that, but LSU Odyssey is going to. I got a feeling about this one. Check out our, our 2022 class uh, 2.0 predictions. Please, please, please. It's got some great info on these guys. If, if you, you know, if you if you want to stick with, with 24-7 and Rivals and, and some of those places, that's fine. They're great resources, but they don't go in as deep as we do. We go really, we cut it to the bone to who some of these players really are and what they can do on the field and off. And it's not always just about what they can do for LSU. Sometimes it's just about the player themselves. So please uh, check that out if, you, if you're down. And, and thank you so much for subscribing and supporting us at LSUodyssey.com. We really appreciate it. We had our 500th article over the weekend, and it's been it's been a crazy ride. But uh, we're not even we're not even going to dwell on it. We're just going to keep pushing. And we already got the next seven articles already stacked and ready to go um, just some final edits and things like that to go through some vetting of a few sources but we've got some very interesting stuff for the 2021 class coming up here some 2021 player profiles as well that you gotta check out and there's there's a very very intriguing interview that LSU fans are going to want to read that uh, is going to come out this come out this week um, from someone within LSU, it's, it, I'm not going to say who, but you're going to want to check that out. LSUodyssey.com, baby. Go Tigers.